Today we will focus on love and seek to develop a much deeper understanding of love through the messages embedded in its manifestation code. And we will follow this with a separate part two webinar where we will learn the actual technique for manifesting love and practice it together. So our proposition thought is to manifest love, okay? So let us delve deeper into the love we are seeking to manifest. Let us start with a quick look at the definition of love. What does the published literature say about love? It says love is strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. For example, the maternal love for a child. The other is that love is an attraction based on sexual desire. And it can be experienced as affection and tenderness that is felt by lovers. So that's number two. Number three, love is an affection based on admiration, benevolence, and common interests. Number four, love is warm attachment, enthusiasm, or devotion. And number five, love is unselfish, loyal, and benevolent. So, for example, the fatherly concern of God for humankind or brotherly concern for others. Now, as I look at these definitions, I don't get a clear sense of what love is. Do you? It appears that the writers of these published definitions seem to struggle with how best to define love because it can be characterized in experience at such diverse levels. Let us try and figure out a definition of love for ourselves. Let us explore the question, what is love? Is it a feeling? Or is it an emotion? Or an instinct? Or is it an energy? Or is love a power? Or is it all of the above? What is love? So my dear friends, I took some time to meditate on this question. And here is the definition I was inspired with, which I believe describes love with more clarity than what I've been able to find in the published literature, which is, love is a foundation like the roots of a tree. It is the reason why the tree grows and blossoms for love is integrally embedded in life itself. I will repeat this. Love is a foundation like the roots of a tree. It is the reason why the tree grows and blossoms, for love is integrally embedded in life. So my dear friends, if you take the foundation of love away, the tree shrivels and dies. So love is life, they are one, and you can't tell them apart, actually. It is the foundation of life. A simple analogy, because it's, you, the, the definition might be a little complicated, but simple analogy is an apartment tower. Let's say a tower of 50 floors of apartments, fully lit up, full of life. It's Christmas time. Everything is bursting with life and color and light from the lobby to every apartment to every window you see lots of light, okay? You can see it all before your eyes, but what you are seeing is life. Love is that foundation of this tower which you don't see, it's underneath. But it is present in every light that you see shining from every window and every visible spot. So it's a hidden in the foundation, but yet manifest with what we call life. So that's our definition of love, a more profound and a more holistic one. Now this opens doors to understanding the attributes of love. Let's see how. Our first question was, is love a feeling or emotion? So if love is a foundation of everything, including life itself, then love can definitely be experienced as a feeling or emotion because life energy 
in which love, which is love an integral part of, is an intelligence that drives our physical, mental, and emotional bodies. So being present in the makeup of the emotional body means love can definitely be experienced as a feeling or an emotion. And to take it one step further, love can be experienced with a totally diverse range of feelings and emotions. Its diversity is limitless. It even varies from being to being, creature to creature. And this is where the instinct part of love also comes into the mix. You can see the instinctive dimension of love in how a mother protects her child. And this is evident throughout nature. Look at a lioness. She's fine until you come close to her cubs. She will do whatever it takes to protect them. Her protective instincts come from love. Next, let us look at love with, the res with respect to the physical body. Here, love can manifest as a physical experience, for example, through our sexuality. And in this process, when a new life is to be conceived, it is conceived through the foundation of love, through which life energy is conferred upon the fetus. So love is present at the, as the very foundation, even at a physical level. So here again, you see further diversity in how love can manifest. Number three, the other question was, is love an energy? Now you can see that the answer is yes. Love is an integral facet of life energy. So at the highest of levels, love can be deemed as an energy. This also means love has the ability to flow because energy flows. And here, each one of us has the power to spread love by enabling its flow to the widest corners of our world. This is how we can change our world for the better, through the power and flow of love. We also raise the question, is love a power? I think you can see now that the answer is yes. It is present in life energy, and this makes it extremely powerful because the intelligence of life energy is extremely powerful. Hence, love can be experienced as a power. For example, power of attraction or more. Now we see how when love is hurt or betrayed, its opposite is born, which is hatred. And hatred is an extremely powerful and destructive force. So you can think of the concept of love being a power and what its opposite does. And finally, love also has a very deep and powerful spiritual aspect to it. And we did a masterclass on boundless love where we learned in depth about this spiritual love and how it exists and how it can be accessed through thought and meditation. As a very quick recap, the boundless love is a unique type of love, which is very different to the love that we feel towards our fellow beings or creation. This love is deep, pure, and it flows through our entire being in a very powerful way. We can feel it in our meditation, as well as in our simple material activities. It is present with us everywhere. We may experience it in short bursts or in constant waves. Sometimes when we are in the presence of enlightened beings or are in sacred places, we feel this love. It makes us extremely happy and our natural emotion is to cry. And I'm sure most of us have experienced this at one point or another in our lives. We have experienced this boundless love. And I've explained the boundless love in much detail in stages 8, 9, and 10 of the 10 stages of the soul. Please do revisit these videos because these are the key final stages of the soul and you can see how love plays that immensely powerful role in those last three stages as boundless love. Also, we have a video of a guided meditation called Attracting Boundless Love. Please visit that too. So today, my dear friends, 
Before we go further into the manifestation code for love, let me reiterate our inspired definition of love one more time. Love is a foundation, like the roots of a tree. It's a foundation. It is the reason why the tree grows and blossoms. For love is integrally embedded in life itself. And when you have moments of quiet reflection, contemplate this definition at a deeper level. And you'll be quite amazed with what you begin to realize and experience next in your life. So I would highly recommend you take some time and contemplate this definition. It's quite complete. Let us now move to the manifestation code for love, which is our focus for today. And it's truly fascinating. So what is the manifestation code of love? It goes by the following words. By the pearls in the seabed and the stars in the sky. I'll repeat that. By the pearls in the seabed and the stars in the sky. So how is this code connected to love? By the pearls in the seabed and the stars in the sky. Let us look at the pearls in the seabed first. Number one, pearls are very precious. They are priceless actually for those that understand its value. So is love. Love is very, very precious. And those of us who have experienced it know how precious it is. Two, when they shine, pearls emit a soft white light that resembles the light of a soul. As a soul has the appearance of a small ball of light, which is all whitish in color, very much like the pearl. This reflects a deep spiritual dimension of love, i.e. love has a spirit that projects the light of life. Then the third is pearls exist in the shells of oysters in a totally subtle manner. You cannot tell which oyster has the pearls or even where you can find such oysters. This is a dimension of subtlety that love has. Love does not stare you in the face. It is extremely subtle. Be awake enough to recognize it. And then living within the shells that are quite unattractive when you look at an oyster, it's not a very attractive shell. But living in the shells that are unattractive brings a dimension of pure humility to love. The pearl itself is radiant, gorgeous, beautiful, but look where, it, look where it appears from. So that brings a dimension of humility to love. And this is a very important lesson if we want to build and grow in our love, in our life, in all its facets. Number four, a pearl can grow in sweet and salty water. It is produced in a creature called mollusk which are oysters or clams in salt water and mussels in sweet water. Pearls grow from a material called nacre, N-A-C-R-E, which is a form of calcium carbonate within a mineral called argonite, which is a luminous, which is luminous or iridescent. This argonite forms in very thin plates, which are powerfully bound together as the pearls form through an incredibly high binding force that holds the shiny plates together to create the beautiful glowing pearl. Now from these scientific facts of the pearl, we can decipher more aspects of love. What are they? First one is that it is light and radiance as we just discussed, love is radiance. Secondly, argonite, being composed of uh, calcium carbonate, which is an element of the earth. So love lives in all creation of this earth. That's what argonate and calcium carbonate are. They're elements of the earth. So love lives in all creation of the earth, animate and inanimate. Thirdly, the binding force that holds the pearl together 
is indicative of the power of love to bind everything, making love a unifying force. Love attracts, love binds, and love unites, as so beautifully revealed through the pearl. Next, the fact that the pearl will emerge, regardless of whether the water is sweet or salty, is also a very profound dimension of love. It reveals to us that love knows no race, no culture, or any of our human differences. It is pure, and it will manifest wherever it seeks to manifest. There are only two types of water in our world, my dear friends, sweet and salty, and that's a universal aspect of love. So love is universal in its nature, totally universal, and it does not connect in any way to our differences. Another important factor to consider is why does the mollusk produce the pearl in the first place? What causes the mollusk to produce the pearl? Interestingly, it is to help the creature eliminate an irritation that occurs in its cells that can be caused by parasites and many other factors. So the mollusk secretes argonite around a seed point and then as the pearl grows, the irritation goes away. What a beautiful aspect of nature. Also, the mollusk opens its shell and allows water to flow in it so it can feed from the micronutrients that are present in the water. However, with this water comes parasites, and these cause the pearl to grow stronger and stronger so as to resist these parasites. So these are amazing new revelations of love from the pearl. So what do we glean from these facts? We glean that the pearl is produced to heal the creature from irritants. So love is a healer. Love heals everything. And look at the evidence of this, thousands of feet below the ocean. Isn't it gratifying when we realize that, that such evidence rests at the bottom of the ocean? Next, the pearl grows stronger as it is challenged by the parasites. This explains why love is always challenged in our world to make it stronger. And those who have weathered the challenges together will tell you that their love is the strongest it has ever been. The weaker couples break apart and walk away, which may suggest, possibly, that what they had may not really have been love. It may have been attraction, it may have been infatuation, or other emotions that they interpreted as love. It's a possibility. Or, if what they did lose was true love, and they lost it in this lifetime, the journey does not end here. Rest assured that their love will keep evolving till their pearl is fully grown, either in this lifetime or lifetimes to come. True love never ends. Just as life is eternal, so is love. An inspired soul once disclosed to me that his soulmate and him have journeyed together for so many lifetimes. He remembers the immense challenges that he and his soulmate have weathered together. And finally in this lifetime, through the strength of their love, they manifested the pearl, fully grown and shining. And at this stage, they have both discovered the boundless love as well. So him and his soulmate, he says, will fly away into the horizon together like white doves when their time comes. They may go one first, the other second, but they will both fly off into the horizon like white doves and that they are not coming back again because they have achieved ultimate fulfillment through their love. What an amazing accomplishment to celebrate. And someone can actually say that to you. So my dear friends, those of you who have experienced true love and lost it somewhere along your journey 
through the challenges that love always entails, all I can say is do not lament. It will come back, for true love never dies. And I pray you may find it again in this lifetime. And if not, simply keep your heart open. It will find you again in another lifetime if you're so blessed, but it will find you again. Now let us look at the word. So just from the word pearl, you can see it just opens up into so many dimensions of love. Now let us look at seabed. What does that represent? What does that tell us? So the seabed is the floor of the sea or ocean. It is the deepest, deepest point of the ocean. The seabed is a projection of the depth of love. Love resides at the deepest, deepest level of our being. Love is not superficial. It's very, very deep, like the seabed. Next, the seabed is very hard to reach. Very, very hard. Many pearl divers lose their lives as they venture deep into the ocean bed. Now, this is another profound reality of love. Love is not easy to achieve and sustain. It takes work, it takes commitment, prioritizing, and a lot more. And just like the diver sacrifices his or her life for the pearl, love entails sacrifice. And if one's love is true, then that sacrifice simply flows and happens and the reward is immeasurable. How do you measure the value of true love? Therefore, to love means to be open to do whatever it takes to sustain and cherish it. I would repeat that because it's a beautiful statement. To love means to be open to do whatever it takes to sustain and cherish it. We have to work very, very hard to find love, just like the pearl is hard to find. And we should be prepared to sacrifice whatever it takes to keep the light of our love alive. Remember this, my dear friends. If ever you doubt or question your love in the midst of your challenges, challenges, difficulty, and sacrifice are part of love's journey. That should come as no news to you. That's what the pearl and the seabed is saying to you. Now, I'm not saying for a moment that if you had enough, you should keep taking more and not walk away. I'm not saying that at all. That is your privilege. But what I am saying is look at your love in this context as you decide. When I see people say they fell out of love, I am deeply, deeply saddened because that has to be one of great life's greatest losses. Unless, of course, which is very often the case, what people thought they had was not real love. In which case, I wish them well, and I pray that they do find true love. Not every diver finds his or her pearl, but they do try their best. They continue to try because it is absolutely worth the reward of immeasurable value. Next. The seabed is the quietest part of the ocean. The surface can have a raging storm with huge waves, but the bottom is calm and it is still. This points to the spiritual and emotional opportunities for love. The emotional part is simple. If you seek love, seek it from the quietest and calmest level of your being. This takes awareness, commitment, and effort. Finding love as you swim on the ocean's surface in the middle of chaos is very difficult. And your chances are poor, because that's not where the pearls reside. You have to seek from the depth of your being to find love. You have to call on love from the depth of your being if you wish to find love or if you wish it to find you. And this brings us to the spiritual opportunity. When we meditate or practice deep spiritual contemplation, 
we are actually heading to that point of pure calmness, stillness and silence where the pearls are to be found. Remember, the still seabed, it's very still. And this is where the most precious pearls can be found. The ones that represent the boundless love are to be found here. Now, getting up at 4 a.m. each day at the hour of sweetest sleep and sitting in meditation is not easy. It takes commitment and sacrifice and that's exactly what is required to discover love. And if you are so blessed, you may discover the boundless love. Now we have discussed in the past as to why 4 a.m. is a good time, the early hours of the morning are important. Do visit uh, your, these master classes on meditation and refresh your memories. However, from the perspective of diving down to the seabed, the 4 a.m. makes complete sense. This is the hour when the energy levels of the earth are at their lowest, at their bare minimum. Things are calm and things are still at this hour, just like the seabed. So even from the perspective of seeking and finding boundless love, your search has the highest chance of success at these hours. Then the world wakes up and the chaos begins placing you at the surface of the sea amidst the big waves. Next, the seabed is the lowest part of the sea or ocean. So this also reflects the dimension of humility of love. Love flows to where there is humility and it stays away from arrogance and ego. I will repeat that because this is a very important statement. Love flows to where there is humility and it stays away from arrogance and ego. So no matter how wealthy you may be, or how good looking you may be, or how attractive you may be, remain humble if you seek love. And this humility entails treating everyone you encounter with love and respect. Don't brush them off because you consider them inferior or unattractive or whatever your material mind tells you, for you never know which one of them is the bearer of the true love that can transform your life. Or they may lead you to the true love that may transform your life, but you discarded them, you ignored them, you maybe you shut down the route to what you were actually going to find. Failing to recognize love when it comes to you is another tragedy of life in this world. Don't let it happen to you, my dear friends. Now that you know how love also seeks you. Like Rumi beautifully says, and I'll paraphrase, that which you are seeking is seeking you. That which you are seeking is seeking you. And this is absolutely true for love. So my dear friends, this manifestation code for love just came by pure inspiration. And as I dug deeper into its words, I was fascinated and humbled beyond belief. Very gratifying. And I'm so glad we are sharing it together today because we are blessed with this knowledge through which we can grow. So to really understand love is not easy. Poets and philosophers and artists have long tried to express what the pearls in the seabed have so eloquently portrayed. There's only pearls in the seabed, four words, but look what they portrayed. Now let us explore the second part of the manifestation code of love. So the code is by the pearls in the seabed and the stars in the sky. Let us explore what the stars in the sky represent. Let us begin with the stars. The stars like the pearls, are tiny specks of light that shine at us from far, far away. The, star, the stars are in the furthest point of our vision, just like the seabed is in the sea. It's a mirror. So the stars also project the fact that love is difficult to find and reach. The tiny size of the stars, as we perceive them, also represent the dimension of pure humility, of love. 
And we also saw it present in the pearls in the seabed amidst these shells that were so unattractive. Next, the pearls in the seabed can be physically reached by divers, but the stars are beyond our physical reach with the technology as we humans have today. So the pearls are physically reachable, the stars are not. But the stars are clearly out there. We can see them, and yet physically reaching them is not possible. However, they can be reached spiritually through meditation and deep contemplation. Reaching these stars is a lofty goal, but those who are willing to work at it and make the sacrifices of time and pressure sleep, they can reach the love out there, the boundless love, they can. The stars are a clear calling to the seekers of boundless love. From this aspect, the stars versus the pearls, we can appreciate that love can manifest in us physically via the pearl and spiritually via the star. This is an important factor to consider because most of us seek love and know love as we interpret it in our physical material dimension. We feel the attraction and all those beautiful emotions and feelings flow through us and that is love in the physical dimension. Our art, our poetry is full of prose on these dimensions. And in the material plane, so many of us think that love belongs to us. And this causes so much heartache. Love belongs to no one. Remember, belongs to no one. It is free and it flows to where it is respected or destined. So let's not act as if we own our love. Let's detach from that notion. I will share here an example of a dilemma that has caused so much misunderstanding in our world where love is concerned. So let us say that there is this woman who is very happily married with her husband and they are both deeply in love. What they have is the physical or material dimension of love in their relationship. They have the pearl. Now, the same woman may have a deep spiritual loving connection with another soul or souls, could be male or female, but she has this second connection or multiple connections. So let us complicate the picture here a bit more by saying that she has found love at a spiritual level with another man. So her love for him is at the level of the stars. It cannot be reached physically, but it can be experienced through special and deep loving relationship that is totally non-physical. It is a very pure form of that perspective. It's not comparable to the material perspective. It is not how we express love in the material sense. It is not how the pearl expresses love. It is how the star expresses love. Now this is where problems can begin. Her husband cannot understand why she has this bond with another man and he feels betrayed. And yet this woman is being 100% loyal to him always because they have the pearl. So this feeling of betrayal comes from culture, traditions, control, and a sense of ownership, all of which don't work where love is concerned. So this man says, how can another man have a special place in the heart of my wife, he asks. And he feels very hurt. He cannot see that she is actually very blessed, that her love has found her in both dimensions, the pearl in her marriage and the star in her spiritual dimension. Unfortunately, to keep the peace with her husband, she has to let go of the star. Very sad because that causes a very deep hurt and this cycle will have to return later in her life or in another lifetime, but she has to let it go because it's not allowable based on our very limited understanding of love. So it's very important that we 
recognize love in our life and understand it for what it really is. If we have the pearl, we are blessed. If we have the stars, we are also blessed. And if we have both, we are extremely fortunate. Remember I said earlier that your love will find you again, even in another lifetime. So in this example, it is possible that the spiritual bond of love with this other man may have come from her previous journey. Her love found her with the soul that she has a connection with, came to her, but life would not permit it in this material plane. Culture, tradition, sense of ownership, sense of control would not permit it. But now we are wiser. We can see the bigger picture. In our complicated world of belonging and ownership and rights over each other, we can sadly lose our love. So this understanding we have derived today from the manifestation code of love is extremely important to help us develop harmonious and fulfilling loving relationships in our lives, whatever we have time left ahead of us. So accept and respect love in whatever form it finds you and respect the right of others to have the same. If what you have in your marriage is indeed the pearl, no one can take it away from you, no one, unless you let it go because you fail to understand the difference between the love of the pearl and the love of the stars. Then it's a sad loss. Something to contemplate, my dear friends. Now, of course, I must add that in some very blessed relationships, a husband and wife can share both dimensions, the pearl and the star. In our example today, this was not the case because I wanted to illustrate that difference between the two and how failing to recognize one against the other leads to sometimes loss of real valuable love in our lives. In my first book, so the next point is that in my first book, Reflections from the Origin, I was inspired with the words, the stars are not balls of fire in the universe. They are aspects of knowledge. The stars are not balls of fire in the universe. They are aspects of knowledge. So while we are talking about the stars, I have explained this concept in a video entitled, How to Harness Our Cosmic Connection. Please look up that video. Take the time to revisit it because it covers fascinating dimensions of our cosmos and the stars. And it explains what aspects of knowledge really means. I don't have the time to go through it today, but this video will give you plenty of clarity on the concept. So since stars are aspects of knowledge and we have learned that knowledge is light, this is what the stars project to us, the light of knowledge in its myriads of aspects. Just look at the stars on a clear night to recognize how vast their presence is. So stars characterize love as a very deep well of knowledge, a very deep well of knowledge. A great soul once said, and I'll paraphrase, one way to discover God is to love another being, another human being wholly and completely. One way to discover God is to love another human being wholly and completely. So the stars also tell us that life, that love in itself embodies deep, deep knowledge. And when the lover reaches its full depth, he or she discovers God or his or her creator. That's how far love can take you to that ultimate discovery. So my dear friends, here is a profound mystical dimension of love from its manifestation code. And finally, let us explore the word sky, because the manifestation code for love says, stars in the sky. What does the sky represent? So we've done pearls, we've done seabed, we've done stars. What does the sky represent? The sky where the stars reside is vast and infinite, just like the ocean where the pearls reside. So sky, like the ocean, is a symbol of the infinite. Therefore, love is infinite. It has no limits nor boundaries. Love cannot be quantified or measured because it is infinite. 
The creator is infinite. And this is why most scriptures refer to the creator as all loving, all love. Next, the sky represents the limits of human vision. And yet, we know the stars reside well beyond, beyond the capacity of our vision. Hence, love too lies well beyond human vision and comprehension, which is why you will find the worlds of philosophy, art, and science, they run out of words and descriptions when they try to characterize love. I believe the manifestation code for love probably provides the most comprehensive insight of love that I have come across. Another spiritual dimension that the sky projects is one of nothingness. When you leave the Earth's atmosphere and enter outer space, it's a pure vacuum, nothingness. And the stars reside in this nothingness, emitting light of knowledge, which is the light of creation. You see, the ocean has something. It has water, which is the essence of life. Without water, there is no life. And in this essence of life resides the pearls. Now in nothingness, you also find the light of life present in the stars. So it's again a mirror. This tells us that love exists in the tangible, like water, and the intangible, like the nothingness out there where the stars reside. Love is present everywhere, therefore, that's what we conclude from it. And in meditation, we go to the level of nothingness, where there is no physical matter, no time, no change, just pure stillness. And that's where we discover our higher self, our soul and creator. So the sky tells us that love is present where the soul is and where the creator is in pure nothingness. Nothingness is still. So there's a parallel with the seabed which is also the most still part of the ocean. Again, you can see the mirror in, in this manifestation code. One has the stars in stillness, one has the pearls in stillness. Both are present in the manifestation code of love. You can see how deep a spiritual significance this code attaches to love. We've covered so much ground of love from its simple manifestation code. So now to conclude, let me summarize it very briefly for you. What have we gleaned from the manifestation code of love? Such few words, but we have gleaned 22 aspects. One, love is absolutely precious. It is priceless. Next, two, love has a spirit. It is the light, it is light and radiance. Three, love is extremely subtle. It does not stare you in the face. Four, love is very hard to find. It resides in the deepest, deepest level of our being. Next, love can be best sought from the calmest and quietest level of your being. Then, love is pure humility. Love flows to where there is humility and it stays away from arrogance and the ego. Number seven, love, lies in all, love lives in all creation of this earth, animate and inanimate. Next, love exists in the tangible and intangible, hence love is present everywhere. Number nine, the power of love attracts Love binds everything together, making it a unifying force. Therefore, love creates unity. Next, love knows no race, culture, or any of our differences. It is pure, and it will manifest where it seeks to, or it will manifest where it is destined to, it chooses. And therefore, love is universal in nature. Next, love is a healer. It heals everything. Then, love entails challenge in our world, and this challenge makes it stronger. Number 13, love is not easy to achieve and sustain. It takes work, commitment, prioritizing, and lots more. 
Number 14, love entails sacrifice. And if one's love is true, that sacrifice simply flows and happens and the reward is immeasurable, but the sacrifice has to be made. Number 15, to love means to be open to do whatever it takes to sustain and cherish it. Next, the highest form of love, which is known as the boundless love, can be reached by a spiritual search and meditation. Number 17, love is a very deep well of knowledge and love embodies the deepest knowledge that exists. Next, through love, one can reach one's creator. This is the mystical dimension of love. And therefore, number 19 says, love has a divine nature and it is present where the soul is and it is where the creator is in pure nothingness. Number 20, love is infinite. It has no limits or boundaries. Love cannot be quantified or measured because it is infinite. And finally, 21, love lies well beyond human vision and comprehension. So you can see how much depth exists in these simple words by the pearls in the seabed and the stars in the sky. You can see how much they reveal. It is fascinating because from such few words we found 21 meanings and not just meanings but dimensions and important aspects of love. And there's lots more to discover as you contemplate the manifestation code of love. We've covered a lot of ground today and I would like to end this part, part one masterclass, of how to manifest love at this point. You have lots to think about, lots to mull over, and now you can see why we couldn't fit the entire technique and the meaning of the manifestation codes in one 60-minute class. In the part two class, I have more to share, which we will cover as we learn the actual technique of how to manifest love. So with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for being here with us today. I'd like to take this opportunity to we'll offer a humble prayer that the light of our Creator may always be with you to help you, guide you, protect you, and love you always. And also that through the holiday seasons you all have wonderful times with your family and loved ones. And for the next two weeks we will not have a class because of the holiday times. And we look forward to seeing you all again after the new year. So take care and stay blessed. And thank you so much for walking the journey with us.